So now that we're up to speed with everything, we now are aware about the different files. For example, here dog.txt and hello.exe. Now we're going to be deleting these first. And I want to be creating just one directory. Let's just name it your directory. Okay. And a file named, let's name it, what do we, what do we call it? Turkey. TXT again. I really love turkeys for some reason. And we're now going to be checking the file permissions. Okay. LS, we're going to type in LS dash AL. Oh, okay. Um, so this is the file permissions, and I'm going to be explaining them with this file permissions and how we're going to be changing them later. So first, let's explain what are file permissions. So file permissions are technically yeah the overall permissions that we're allowed uh, that are allowed on this file. So let's just zoom in here. So we're gonna first notice that on to the very far left, we're only gonna be concentrating here, okay? So if it has a dash, that means it is just a regular file. If it has a D, that means it's a directory. In this case, since directory is a directory, okay, that's kind of ironic. Uh, it has a D in front of it. Next, what we're gonna be noticing is these. We're gonna group them into three as specified here in the photo. So the farthest left, group of threes if it has rwxr stands for read w for write and x for execute now the first group the trio group of rwx is the permissions for the owner of the file owner of the file typically means the, the uh, user that created the file okay so in this case since we are root and we're the ones who created it we are technically the owner of the file and we have full permissions for example we are able to read write and execute the next three which would be here this is the read and write read write execution permissions for the members of the group owning the file so for example you're in a network you have a group and if you have this group allowing to access this file they're only they will only be able to read and execute it but they are not able to write since um, they're restricted from it okay and then lastly for the other users for example in your computer you have more than one user in your Kali Linux machine then they're only permitted to read and to execute but they are not allowed to write okay so that's basically what it means here so just follow this diagram you can actually search this on Google and in or if ever you just get confused again and you just want to remember okay just always remember that they're grouped into three. The far that's left is for the owner of the file. The second one trio in the middle is for the group. And the last one is for all other users, okay? All right, so cool. Um, one thing I also forgot is ls-a. So L what ls-a is for to show down or list the files that are um, hidden. So how do we know if there's a hidden file? In this case, we there isn't a hidden file, but I'm going to teach you how to make one real quick. So using the touch command again, for example, you want to make a text file. Um, we're going to name it uh, secret.txt. What we're going to do is we're going to add a dot in front of it. Now, if you hit ls, as you can see, it's not there. I hit ls-a for all, and it shows us that there is a hidden file in secret.txt. So that's typically one way how you can distinguish if it's a hidden file or not, if it has a dot in front of it. This is a useful command, um, especially if you want to be checking if all files, all fire file permissions are given. Okay, especially if it's a hidden file, as you can see here, ls-al. All right, so now we learned about permissions. The f last thing that is very important for us to learn is how do we change permissions? How do we allow or limit uh, other users from actually opening different files that we have within our system okay so from here we're going to be learning how to use getting exiting this now since we already understand the basis of this and I'm gonna be opening this we're now going to be using the chmod command 
All right, let me just uh, expand this just a little. Okay, we're now gonna be learning the chmod command. chmod meaning to change or modify. Okay, so as we are aware, we're gonna first list down our permissions here. Let's say the turkey.txt file. We are, um, as the owner of the file, we have read, write, capabilities and permissions if take note if it has a dash that means it that permission is disabled okay so for the groups they only have read permissions it's the same goes for others or the other users now I want to change for example I want to add a permission that for the group and the other users they are allowed to write as well so how do we change that we're gonna type in chmod and take note of the decimal you don't need to take note of the octal because it can be quite confusing. Take note of the decimal here within the graph, okay? And we want to add a RW, correct? So just look down to where here in the representation or here in the permission, just find read, write, and look at its equivalent decimal number. In this case, it's six. So just watch what I do here, turkey.txt. So why, why three sixes? The first digit or the first six is for the root uh sorry for the owner of the file the second one is for the group and the last digit of six is for the other users now if we hit enter here and check again as you can see each user now has uh changed permissions where every user is now able to read and write now what if for example i want to limit i only want to limit the other users from not being able to read and write so basically only the group and the owner of the file is able to read and read and write to the turkey.txt okay so this is basically it ch mod the first one is six which means we are capable of read and write for our uh, owner six for again the group which allows read and write and zero which means no permission for our other users now if we check again the permissions uh, slash al so you can see now the other users doesn't have any permissions at all all represented by dashed lines all right okay so last one for example in the secret file chmod.secret.txt we want to change let's say we only will allow the owner to access read and write Okay, so 600, and we're gonna check that. As you can see now, only we are able to read and write the in the .secret .txt file. So yeah, that's basically it. I hope you were able to learn something from our basic Linux commands, and hopefully by the time we'll be heading to episode four, you're already familiar and you're already comfortable with controlling the operating system, the Linux operating system through the terminal itself. There's a lot of commands, and I mentioned earlier, there's a lot of different commands in, within the Linux terminal, and these basic commands are only just the tip of the iceberg of the tons and the long list of different commands that are available for the Linux terminal. They'll be good enough to be able to help you get around. For episode four, we're finally gonna get started in information gathering. So guys, I hope you guys learned something today. Once again, I'll see you in the next video. God bless, guys. If you're enjoying and learning something from the series so far, don't forget to hit the like button and hit the subscribe and the notification button in order for you to be notified in one of our next videos for the basics of ethical hacking, as well as other videos that may come up on our channel. All right, guys, so thanks again.